Hey, what is going on? Evan here. And today we're going to be talking about wet maps again. And the reason why I'm excited about this video is because we're doing UV based wet maps. And that means the resolution of the geometry on which you're creating the wet map does not matter because we're going to be using the UVs instead. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, here we are in Houdini. For the sake of simplicity, instead of working with water, I'm going to be working with this cloth. So let's let's just pretend that this cloth is wet. And when it drags across the rubber toy, it's going to make the rubber toy wet as well. All right, so I'm going to turn off the template really quickly. And I'm going to drop down my wet map HDA. And the link will be in the description. You can get it for free, of course. Uh, let's see. So the way that we used to do it is we would plug this. It says uh, if we look at this input right here, we mouse over it. It says create wet map on. So typically we would create the wet map on. Uh, actually, let me turn off the template, put the regular display flag. There we go. So what we would do is we would create the wet map on this geometry. But the problem is that we are limited by the resolution of the geometry. And I would like to circumvent this. So instead, I'm going to be using, as I said earlier, UV based wet maps. And to give credit where credit is due, I'd like to thank the YouTube channel Nine Between. Um, I got the idea from him to do it this way. And so I'm really, I'm really grateful that he uploaded a tutorial talking about this. So thank you very much. All right. So I'm going to cut this wire. Well, actually, I'm not going to undo that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a scatter node and I'm going to drop that in. And it's very important to, um, for me to say this, since these are UV based wet maps, you need to make sure that your, your object has UVs on them. The rubber toy already has UVs on them. Uh, you can check two ways. You can middle mouse your node. Oh man, I hate this crap. I, this dumb thing happens to me where when I middle mouse, it just gives me this error. Cannot figure out how to fix it. All right, I reopened to Houdini so it should work. All right, perfect. So when I middle mouse it, it says uh, UV vertex attribute. And also if we hit space and then five, we can also see that the UVs are laid out. And something cool about Houdini that I like is when we lay down the scatter node, you might think, well, there's no UVs, right? Because there can't be vertex attributes because these are now points. But fortunately, Houdini, when you drop the scatter node down, you can see that we do in fact have a UV attribute and that's because Houdini is automatically copying our point attribute, or I'm sorry, our vertex UV attribute to our points. And we can test this out too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down an attribute wrangle node and let's wire this in. If you think about it, the UV attribute is pretty much the same thing as the regular position attribute. The position is just the position in 3D space with three values and the same thing. The UV is just the position, but in 2D space. So that means if I come here and I'm going to type in V at P, I'm going to say equals V at UV. So what I'm saying is that the position equals the UV attribute. And so if I um, click enter, you can see that everything snaps down exactly to how our UV view would look. And so like right now, I'm just uh, in the front viewport. And if I, if I toggle this and switch to the UV viewport and then go back to the test geometry or go back to the rubber toy, you can see that it's the same thing. Now you may be wondering, well, why does this matter? Well, you're going to see in a moment, it's going to make sense. I promise. Uh, we don't need this wrangle, so I'm going to delete it. Now, as I said, the, the resolution of the geometry doesn't matter. However, the more po you can control the resolution of the wet map by generating more points here. So the more points that you have here, the more accurate it's going to be. So this is not, I'm not trying to make the best thing right now. So I'm just going to do like 100K points. And something I like to do is I like to turn off max radius and then for relax uh, iterations, I like to put that on 100 and that makes sure that the scatter is more uniform so that each each point is evenly spaced. All right, that's good enough for what we're doing now. All right, now let's plug the cloth into the other end of the wet map. And instead of using the cloth, what I did was I just converted it to points. And that's going to take a while to cook. I, I reopened Houdini. Yeah, I just converted it to points. So it's basically the cloth with just the point version, just so that the resolution is a little bit higher. Because if you look at the actual the actual resolution of this cloth, it's not super high. So I just wanted to make it a little bit higher resolution. All right, so I'm going to take this and plug it into the create wet map from. All right, perfect. And let me go back to frame one. And I'm going to click the eye icon. And then I'm going to turn on wet. And that way we can visualize the wet attribute. And I know that the the distance threshold is too high. 
So I'm gonna change that down to like 0.3 for now. And I'm gonna put the template on this um, cloth just so I can see it. And let's hit play. And we can see that as a cloth is hitting our rubber toy, it starts to um, generate our wet, our wet attribute. That's awesome. And we can see it's fading away. All right, so we have this, but what does this have to do with UVs? Like how, how we're going to bake out a texture? Well, this is where the, what I was talking about earlier about the technique that nine between use, which is really helpful. I'm going to be showing you how to do that. What I'm going to do is, well, let's, let's select this node. I'm going to hit control C and in case you didn't know this, when you copy a node, it actually also copies the text path. So if I come here and I hit control V, you can see that it's actually copying the path to that node, which is really cool. So let's drop down, since we're making a texture, we need a, a cop network. So let's drop down cop to network and drop that in. And let's just double click this and go inside. I'm going to drop down a cop to generator filter. Here it is. And let's see, let's go to image and we're gonna override the default size. And let's actually switch over to the composite view for now. And we're gonna make this a 3K map. So I'm gonna do 3000 by 3000, perfect. Let's see, I'm gonna go inside this and we're gonna drop down a PC uh, point cloud open node. And this is gonna allow us to retrieve our wet attribute. And we need to, let's see, for the position, uh, since we're dealing with pixels, we're gonna grab the X and Y and, and put, plug that into position. So what we need is a float to vector. And um, of course, since we're working in UV space, uh, there's only really two dimensions. So we can just put X and Y in respectively into one and two and three will be empty. And then we'll plug our vector into the position, right? And remember that we're, we're using UV space. So for the position channel, we don't actually want the position, we want to put in UV. And like I said, if you don't have your UV attribute, then this whole this whole thing doesn't work. So you need to make sure you have UVs on your points. And then for the point cloud texture, uh, we're actually going to promote this. And we'll go, we'll go up one level. Actually, let's go back to the setup. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to be reading information from this node. Now, typically, if you're working with a huge cache or a lot of particles, you would want to actually like file cache this out. But since this is relatively fast because we're working on a small amount of points, I'm just going to grab from the node directly. I also will point out that uh, COP networks aren't very stable uh, in Houdini. and They haven't really been updated in a while. So I would say that in terms of stability, caching it out is definitely more stable, at least from my testing. So let's go back in here. And it says point cloud texture. So uh, we hit control V from the node that we copied, uh, but that's not gonna work. We actually need to put OP and then uh, put a colon and now it'll work. And you can actually look that up in the docs um, and it'll explain to you why that works like that. Uh, so let's go back inside and we need to actually grab the attribute wet. And so we can do that with a point cloud filter. Usually these two nodes always um, are placed together. You have your point cloud, then your PC filter so that you can choose what attribute you actually want to get. And we want this to be a float channel because we're grabbing the wet attribute, which is a float. All right, so let's go ahead and put in wet. And we're going to be driving our R, G, and B values with that. So let's uh, connect this. And you can already see something starting to happen there. Nice. And so let me hit space H. Well, actually, let me zoom out just a little bit. And we can already see that the wet map is starting to work. And if you move your um, playhead, you can see that it's actually updating in real time. And so we, we still need to make a few adjustments. Usually what, what I do, it, this could look very weird or it may not look correct depending on how big your search radius is. You need to make sure that it's not too big and you also need to make sure it's not too small. So usually what I do is uh, well, first of all, I put this uh, number of points to one, so that's only sampling one point. And then for the search radius, I usually start with a very, very small value, just to, just so I can see each point to actually make sure it's working. And so if I put this down to like 0 0.001 or 0001, we can see that it is working. So I'm going to increase the radius just a little bit until these white particles are touching each other. So I'm going to slowly increase this. 
Oh yeah, we can see that's a lot better already. So I'm just gonna increase it a little bit more. I'm gonna try like two perhaps. Uh, maybe one eight or something. All right, yeah, that's actually, I'll go back to two. I think two was a bit better. And so we can see that this is actually working pretty nicely uh, and it's updating live, which is nice. And you can see that it fades out just like it does on the geometry. Um, and the reason why it looks like this is probably because they're stepping because I don't really have a lot of sub steps. But like I said, I, this is just a quick wet, wet map, so it doesn't really matter. If you want to smooth this out, there's two ways. Well, there's a couple ways to do it. Obviously, like the reason why it doesn't look so great here is because the resolution isn't too high. But there are a few ways that you can adjust that. Like if I take this and I put the number of points to a higher value, you can see that it starts smoothing it out. Uh, oops, here's one. And then here's three. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's sort of smoothing it out. And after you adjust the uh, number of points, you may need to make um, further adjustments to the radius. So I'm going to just make it a little bit higher. Actually, I think I'm going to go back. Um, sometimes I just leave it at one, uh, but I do want some more smoothing. So let's go back one level and we're just drop down a blur node. And I'm going to connect that and I'll set it to like two. Well, actually this isn't very high resolution. So I'll just do like 1.5. There we go. And so this is our texture right here and we can just drop down a file wrap output. And I'm just going to save a hundred frames and I'm just going to hit render and I'll be back in a moment. All right. That has finished now. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go back a level. And I'm also going to go back to the scene view and let's put the playhead back on the test geometry. And what, what we're going to do is we're going to take that texture that we just baked out and we're going to view it. We can do that very easily with the UV quick shade. I'll wire this in and let's select a texture. And then I'm just going to go find the render that I did. And here we go. All right. So here is the wet map and we're actually previewing it on the object. And we can see that it's fading out properly. Um, oh, the reason why it goes out is because I only saved out 100 frames. But we can see that it is working. Um, it does. It is a little bit slow to update. And this method is the method that I used for this wet map here. So you can see that it does actually look good. Like once you uh, up the resolution on everything. And the thing that's cool about this is that you're also not limited to only using this within Houdini. Since it's an actual texture, you can you can import this into Maya, Cinema 4D, or any other software that you want, which makes it so much easier and faster than trying to render geometry that has millions of points to try to get a high resolution looking wet map. All right, hey, what's up? It's me again from the future. When I was finishing up this tutorial, I actually like I just I had this crazy thought of how I could improve this setup and, it, and I tried it out and it actually worked. So I'm just appending this section um, at the end of the tutorial. What I'm going to do is uh, let's go back to the cop net just to better demonstrate the, the issue. I'm going to change this. Now it may slow down the computer a bit. I'm going to change this to like 6K instead of 3K just so we can see the issue a little bit better. And let's zoom in on one of these. Uh, here we go. Let's take a look at this right here. Oops, I lost it by hitting space H. All right, here we go. So let's let's look at the problem that we have. If we look at it, we can see that some of the edges actually aren't round. And it let's see. Let me just lower the radius just so I can show you the problem. So let me hit space H to make it the appropriate size and then find the area again. All right. So we can see that we have these circles that are being copied, right? Well, the points that are so so we're only seeing points that have a value of one so there's actually points uh that we're sampling all around it that have a value of zero but so you you can't see them of course because they're black because they have a value of zero so what happens is as you as you push push the radius higher and higher it's trying to blend between zero and one uh it's trying to blend between the points that have a value of zero and the points that have a value that are higher than zero and as a result these edges get sort of jagged uh, and it doesn't look good. And so I just had this idea. What if, what if we just removed any point that had a value of zero since we don't need, it doesn't make sense to sample it anyway because it's just going to be zero. So what we can do is let's, let's go back into the setup right here. So after the wet map, 
uh, let's add an attribute wrangle. And uh, let me let me just go back to the scene view. Um, initially, what I what I thought was I would add a simple if statement saying that if the value equals zero, then remove it. But unfortunately, that statement didn't work because of I, I guess it has to do. I don't know much about programming, but I guess it has to do with precision errors. I don't uh, quite understand what that means. But if we go to the geometry spreadsheet and we look at uh, our wet values and let's go towards the end. Um, actually, let me select this node. We can see that instead of going to zero, we get very, very, very tiny values that essentially equal zero um, because this is it says like uh, to the minus ninth. And so, yeah, this is basically just zero. I, for some reason, it doesn't go exactly to zero. But regardless, we can fix that quite easily. So what we can do is we can add an if statement that says if the value of wet is less than, then we can just give it a very, very low number like 0 0.001. Uh, then we can tell it to remove point. And um, I'll, I'll also add this in the description too, just so you can copy it to make it easier. And so now if we put our, our display, uh, display flag on that, we can see that if the, if the points don't have any wet value, then they just get removed. That way in our cop net, we shouldn't be sampling any points that have a value of zero. And so let's copy, uh, let's, let's, look, let's make note of this. I'm gonna add a null with the, and I'm gonna just call it out and let's go back to the cop net and let's sample that instead. Uh, so let's go into the composite view really quickly. And let's go back to frame where it is one so we can see it better. And we can see that we can see that we've gotten rid of all the jagged edges. And I just hit space H again just so I can make it the full size. And we can test that out just to see how it would look without this. So let's go here and disable this. So if we disable it, we can see that we're getting these jagged edges right there. And this stepping right here is just because of the resolution. If you crank up the resolution, like you'll get rid of these, this aliasing, or you could just turn on blur. But if I, if I enable this again, we can see that the values now become round. And so now if I crank up the radius, we won't get all those jagged edges like we have before. So I guess that's sort of a way to fix that issue. I just, like I said, I just thought of that at the end, so I figured I would just add that in really quickly. Anyway, thank you. All right, well, I think that's actually it for, for this video. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.